Welcome to episode number two here on the My Gardener channel. We have wanted to make sure that the episodes didn't get too long, so we split it into a two-part little series here. And this is going to be the remainder of all the seeds we're going to start for the 2016 garden. At least the ones we're starting indoors. We're going to start a lot more outdoors. But uh, yeah, so Cindy, do you want to go through what we're starting in this tray? I'm sure it's all just going to be tomatoes and peppers. So I'll read to you guys all of them. About 90% of them, you can find them at our at my Gardener store. Um, we have large red cherry tomatoes, Hampson tomato, mortgage lifter, delicious tomato, the orange Rossellini, and also Rutgers tomato, yellow plum, Amish paste, Arkansas traveler, and a dinner plate tomato, Ace 55 uh, tomato, and Giallo de Summer tomato, Giant Oxheart Tomato, Celebrity Tomato, Opalka, Sky Reader Tomato, and now we have our peppers. We have a sweet banana pepper, Sunbright Pepper, which is a sweet variety, Anaheim Chile, uh, California Wonder, Sweet Pimento Pepper, Cayenne Long Slim Pepper, and last but not least, uh, least the Big Jim Pepper. Now, which, uh, which pepper would you say you're the most excited to make a salsa out of? Like, have you used any of those in a salsa? Mm, I guess the Anaheim and... The Anaheim's, Anaheim. are, the Anaheim's are my all-time favorite chili pepper, but I wasn't sure if what was more traditional for you. Uh, pimento would be probably closer, but we also go... We we'll also like a lot of the poblanos, which, which oh. is not a variety we have here. Yeah, we, we, we had, have it in the store. We have it in the store, but we just didn't grab it because I... I don't know why we didn't grab it. <laughs> Sorry. Well, maybe. we can we can maybe start them later, or yeah. maybe we can buy some starts or whatever too. Because I I know, um, I want to get some stuff that we can like, that we can like roast and stuff mm -hmm. for salsas. And I know you're the you're the queen of salsas. Um, I'm still trying to get her. You, everyone post in the comments box below if you want to see her make a really traditional salsa recipe. She made it for me. Uh, was about it, a week ago. About a week ago. And wow, that'll knock your socks off. And I think one of the best things about being out here is obviously I'm in the presence of my wife, so it's fun to be together. But I think one of the best things is the fact that the sun is shining super bright and the birds are out like crazy. And I think uh, also what's reassuring is the fact that the grass is actually turning very green. The grass has been growing for about a week here, mm -hmm. uh, not where we live. Cindy and I, we still live where it's a little bit too cold, <laughs> but uh, Downstate a little bit. We're at my parents' house, obviously, as what I'm alluding to. Uh, downstate quite a bit. The grass is actually growing, and spring is actually showing itself. They've had, I think it's like two weeks of, of, um, of weather above 40. So that's enough to get all the flowers blooming. All the trees are almost, almost budding out. So we're gonna get to planting this up, and then we're gonna move on to this one. I will say though, the one tomato I am looking the most forward to obviously besides the orange Rossellini that's that's a given I don't think that's really fair to put that in the in the running for the most uh, anticipated tomato the one that I'm actually looking most forward to is the Opalka we have been really trying to locate some seeds for that tomato it's a difficult one to find it used to be pretty popular but seed suppliers have been cutting it out slowly and we got it from um, who had it uh, we got it from Totally Tomatoes. So if you want to get yours uh, and grow it with us, we'd we'd uh, we'd love that. The Opalka tomato is one of the sweetest. Um, it is one of the sweetest large paste tomatoes that they have, um, and I've heard absolutely nothing but amazing stuff about it. It's similar to like the Roma or the Amish paste, and uh, I heard that it's that it's just an absolutely awesome paste tomato. Um, obviously you have the orange Rossellini, which I think takes the cake for the sweetest tomato in the world. Uh, we're going to still put it to the test this year, but based on last year an 11, if you, uh, if you remember that video that we did, it was an 11 on the brick scale and like all the other tomatoes were seven, eight. So it, it blew them out of the water as far as that goes. All right. So we are on to the very last tray. This is going to be primarily our brassicas. There's a few other tiny little things that we're going to throw in here if we have space if not we have that fifth uh that fifth um tray that we can 
that we can fill if we need it. Um, ooh, wind's picking up just a little bit. <laughs> um, so uh, our first priority is going to be the brassicas. We have here a Long Island Brussels sprout. We have a blue curled Scotch kale, orange Swiss chard, rhubarb Swiss chard, red, uh, ruby red Swiss chard, a rainbow mix Swiss chard, uh, lucillus, Lusilus Swiss chard, green globe artichoke, uh, not a brassica, but it, the if one we have the, space, if we have it. space, if we have space, if not, we'll put it in that fifth one. Uh, this one was actually a gift to us. I again, I apologize who sent it to us, but I am so excited to try it. It's called kale sprout. It's actually a cross between kale and Brussels sprouts. So apparently, it makes kale just like it normally does, but as the season progresses it actually makes brussels sprouts mm. like little little kale balls underneath the leaves really cool and um i'm ex super excited to try this so that's a kale a kaleidoscope kale sprout this is a late flat dutch cabbage mammoth red rock cabbage pak choy cabbage danish ball head cabbage red acre cabbage Red Russian kale, Lacinato kale, and uh, the last one here is the Magenta Sunset Swiss chard. All right, so as we are looking at these here, we are not gonna have enough uh, space. There's definitely not gonna be enough space. So what we are going to do is we're gonna bring out a fifth tray and we'll do that off camera. Uh, we're gonna be planting borage, which is a flower. Bees really love it and the flowers are edible. Triple, triple curled parsley, it's one of our herbs that we really like, it's also a perennial. Uh, the Sparky Mix Marigold, we're going to be planting tons of marigolds in the garden because they're all they're edible, super delicious, and very nutritious. Um, and they also prevent aphids and nematodes. Uh, just absolute awesome plant to have in the garden. And they also attract other pollinators. We're going to plant the green globe artichoke there. Anise, this is not star anise, this is the herb anise. It has very similar flavor, um, like a licorice smell, very good in teas, and it's good for upset stomachs and stuff like that. So we're gonna be planting the anise. And then also we're gonna pl be planting two types of eggplant, the black beauty eggplant and the long purple eggplant. So that is that. Lots of seed starting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, um, so, uh, we're gonna do we're gonna do one row of each of the cabbage because we don't eat that many and that's gonna be a ton of cabbage as it is. Okay. Um, and the kale we should one, plant. Two let's rows. let's do two rows of each kale variety. each each variety of kale because um, that's gonna make sure we have enough. We can at least pick and choose the healthiest. Um, okay. And then we'll do one row of kale sprout because I've never even tried it before. Um, and then we'll do. We'll do two rows of the Long Island Brussels sprouts, okay. and that should be that should be enough. That should finish it up. And this was tried one row of each side. I'll do two rows of the rainbow because I've tried it. I know I know what I'm expecting, so I'll do two rows of the rainbow. So I want to thank you all for tuning in for this episode. Thanks, Cindy, for your help. I appreciate it. Nice two-part series for you all, everyone that uh, is starting seeds and hoping to start seeds. Hopefully, uh, this really just got your engine going for spring. And let me know what you're starting in the comments box below. Always love, uh, always love to see what people are starting. And we hope you are having an awesome uh, time starting your seeds as well. It's something that's so enjoyable and really relaxing. So, anyways, we'll talk to you all later. This is Luke and Cindy from the My Gardener channel. <laughs> Reminding you to go big or go home. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs>